Hello and welcome. This is Real Numbers video number 10 and today we are going to prove that a rational number times an irrational number will always be an irrational number. So let's find out how do we actually solve these type of questions. So let's take some examples. So let's say we have the number 2 and we multiply that by say square root uh, maybe 7. And we want to prove that this is actually an irrational number. So the way we prove that, like we have done previously, is that we are going to prove by contradiction. So we are going to assume it is a rational number and prove that assumption is wrong. So let's say if this is a rational number, then we can write this in the form of a divided by b, where a, b are both integers b not equal to 0 and they do not have any common factors. Now, after that, what we can do, our goal always in these type of questions is to separate the square root term all by itself on the left hand side, right? So on the left hand side, we want to have square root 7. And that means we are going to take the 2 on the other side. So we are going to say square root 7 will be equal to a divided by 2 times b. Now, what is a? a is an integer right? Now, what is 2 times b? b is an integer. So, 2 times b will be another integer. So, we have integer divided by integer and b is not equal to 0. So, the denominator is not equal to 0. So, that means here we have a rational number. So, we have square root 7 is equal to a rational number. Now, we know for a fact square root 7 is not a rational number. Again, it is important in a question such as this, our goal is not to prove how square root 7 is an irrational number. If that were the question, then we have to use the way we proved square root 2 is an irrational number. I'm going to provide that video link here for your easy reference. But when we have a rational number times an irrational number, and we are trying to prove the combination is irrational, we can assume that square root 7 in this case is an irrational number. So coming back to the question at hand, so what we are seeing is square root 7 is equal to a rational number which we know is not correct. And that means our assumption, original assumption, 2 times square root 7 is a rational number, that assumption is wrong. So 2 times square root 7 is an irrational number. So this is how we solve these types of questions. Let's quickly take a look at one other question. So let's say we want to prove 2 by 5 times square root, let's say maybe 11 is an irrational number. How do we do it? So we are going to say, let us assume this is actually a rational number that can be written in the form of a by b, where a, b are co prime and b not equal to 0. And we are going to isolate square root 11 all by itself on one side, on the left hand side. And how do we do that? Well, we are going to simply multiply this by we can put 5 in the numerator and we can put 2 in the denominator. The reason we do that so that this will cancel out and we are going to be left with only 7. That means we are going to multiply here numerator by 5 and denominator by 2. So then on the left hand side we are going to be left with only square root 11 and here we will have 5a divided by 2b. Now 5a will be an integer and similarly we will have denominator will be another integer which is 2b or on the right hand side, I misspelled integer. So on the right hand side, we have integer over integer. So we basically see square root 11 is equal to a rational number, which we know factually is incorrect. Hence our assumption is incorrect. Hence the original number 2 by 5 square root 11 actually is an irrational number. So this is how we solve these types of questions.